All right, we're going to start painting up Cable's arm. Now, uh, Cable's arm is a basically infected with a techno organic virus. That's from what I remember. And from what I remember, Cable was infected as a baby because Apocalypse knew that he was his rival and all that stuff. So we want to make it a little bit more alive. We want to kind of create some kind of a metal that seems to be living in a sense. Uh, so we don't want to do just straight metal paint with some shading and make it look like a steel arm. We don't want to make it look like, you know, I guess like uh, Winter Soldier's arm either. We don't want to uh, do Alclad Chrome. So I was talking to my friend about it. We came up with the idea, well, well, we'll do some metal and then we'll do some kind of like blue speckling or interference type color onto it and make it look a little bit more alive. So it's kind of like an effect. It's just kind of come out with some different stuff. So I was doing some testing on this with some different metal paints and a lot of the other ones I have are just too... They didn't look that right. So uh, I had this AK Interactive Steel, and this works out pretty good. So you can see I was doing some testing, and it looks pretty good. I like the way the steel looks. Now, the other thing, too, is we're going to add a little bit more life to it. So I usually have, you know, interference uh, blue from liquid text that I put on stuff, but I'm not really sure how that's going to look. But I do have this stuff here, which is a uh, sapphire blue pearl from uh, Spaztech. And I think maybe adding this onto it will give it, like, a little bit more of a you know, a little bit more of a blue pearl hints to it, and maybe it'll make it alive a little bit more. So, it's just an experiment. I really don't know how it's going to look, but as I go on to it, if I think it's looking pretty good, we're just going to run with it. Now, what I might do is I might add a little bit of shading, too, within the areas here. So, I think what I'll probably do is we'll get this all coated up with the steel, get it all nice and smooth, make sure I didn't do any errors or anything. We'll do a little bit of shading, not much, just a little bit to kind of make the muscles pop a little bit more. Um, I think what I'll probably do is maybe do some black paint or something within the lines as well. I don't know, I have to kind of, you know, they're really deep in there, so I don't want them like just pure black and make it look like, a, you know, a Colossus type arm. We want to kind of change, just do something with it. I don't know, we'll see what happens. But the main thing is we want to make this metal look a little bit more, you know, like a virus. So we're going to have some fun with it. Alright, so uh, I started to use the Spaztec, uh, what was it, the Pearlized uh, Sapphire Pearl Blue, and it just wasn't doing much at all. I mean, very, very, very subtle. Couldn't really see it, and I think if I sprayed on too much, I would have taken away the, uh, basically the steel. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, try some of the interference uh, blue onto it. So, what I'll do is I'll kick this on, and we'll start getting a little bit of a look. Yeah, that's uh, that's giving me the look I'm looking for. It's uh, it may be hard to see in the camera. Uh, maybe we could go over here a little bit. Um, what it is, it's it's looking like a steel, but we're getting like that kind of like that pearl interference glow off of it, and that's kind of what I was going for. So it's going to look almost. It's not going to look too much steel, but it's going to give a little bit more life to it. So. Uh, Probably have to kind of clear coat it too. Let's hit it with the blow dryer too, just to kind of dry some of it up. Yep, that's uh, that's where we're going for. It's uh, 
Like I said, it's probably hard to see in the camera. Uh, I don't know if the lights are picking it up, but you're getting some kind of like a, or almost feels like an organic feel to the arm now a little bit. So I'm going to do a little bit more of another coat on it. I'm going to let this dry for like a couple minutes, and then we're going to do another like light coat onto it. And then uh, we're probably going to have to seal this up. Now there's two ways of sealing this up. One, we could probably use the Spaztec Clear. Uh, I have uh, both uh, from the airbrush and also from the bottle, uh, the, the spray can. And I think I might use the spray can instead. But I want to I want to see how this looks first. Uh, the other thing too is what I might do is hit it with uh, Alclad Gloss Clear. I kind of like using this clear on a lot of stuff because this kind of seems to protect a lot of stuff, but it doesn't actually dull too much of it down. And this also seems to have a little bit of a of a blue interference in it too. Not much, but a tiny bit. I've noticed when I use this on Alclad Chrome that it still keeps the chromeness uh, as much as possible with still protecting it. So I think I might just use that on this uh, just to kind of seal it up. Uh, might give a little bit more of an effect to it, but like I said, we're gonna let this dry. I'll hit it with another coat, and I think we'll probably be good on the arm. So here's the arm. Uh, hopefully in the camera you guys can see what's looking, uh, what it's looking like. So uh, by putting that interference on it, it took down the steel a little bit more, but it feels a little bit more organic in a way. Um, I, I hit a little bit heavier of the interference on the shading areas and between the muscles, so it made it pop out and give it a cool little look. So the idea, like I said, the idea is kind of trying to go more of that comic book feel, where it feels like it's a, a, it's a comic book type of a, a virus, whereas you know, in the movie, they just gave him a cybernetic arm, you know, and in a lot of other, like, drawings and comic book stuff, they always just make it look like a metal arm, whereas, you know, maybe with some light blue tints to it or something, but for at least this statue, we want the arm to be kind of separated from the rest of the statue, so if there's any other metal stuff like the gun and all that, we want to make the arm look separated in a sense, so I think this will look uh, pretty good once it's all said and done. So I'm going to let this dry up, I'll do my clear coat later, and I'll let that cure up. And then uh, we can get back to working on the statue. All right, so uh, I showed this to my friend. He likes it a lot. He's happy with it. He just mentioned that he would like these lines darker. Uh, at first, he said just throw some black in there. I said black would be too potent. You know, you have this like nice gunmetal type of like color going to a harsh black line, and then it just would look weird. So I said what we'll do is we'll just darken up the lines to a point where it's like not completely black, but it's not like the same color. So I have this dark steel color. I think this dark steel would work good in there, so it'll darken up those lines, but it's not going to take away from the sculpt and the coloring. So uh, this stuff is really good through just the airbrush, and it's also good through a paintbrush as well, nice and smooth. I like this color a lot. Now, 
after it's all done, I want to seal this, but I don't want to make it glossy and I don't want to make it flat. So I have this Mecca Color uh, Satin Varnish, so I'll probably just put a couple drops of water in there, kind of thin this down just a little bit, not much. I've seen this go through an airbrush, no problem, uh, but it is still fairly thick. So what I will do is just thin it down a little bit, give this a nice coat, so just like a satin varnish, protect it a little bit. And uh, it should be a workout pretty good then. So uh, that's where we're at. I'm going to do all these lines off camera because it's just tedious work. And I'm just going to listen to a movie or music or whatever and do it. And then we'll come back when we put on the varnish. Alright, so uh, at this point I want to start adding some color to these pouches. Uh, my friend says they should all be yellow, no gray or anything like that. He's going for a specific look on them. So uh, until, unless that changes down the line, we're going to do all yellow on these things. So with that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize the red oxide paint that's already there as a base because uh, I think that's good. We want to go more leather yellow. We don't want bright yellow. We don't want muddy yellow. So we don't want to use any burnt umbers because uh, burnt umber will be a lot of... Uh, like blue in that brown, so it'll be a little too dark and it'll muddy it up. We want to keep it more raw siennas or burnt siennas. Uh, so right now, I have these two colors here, which is raw sienna and uh, this is a uh, cadmium uh, yellow light. I like to use uh, liquid text out of the tubes for stuff like this when I do sponge work, because there is a texture on these pieces, and I want to kind of utilize that. So I just have some sponges here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these two together to kind of, kind of get kind of like a dull down yellow for now. And then I'm going to just do a bunch of sponge work on it for now and let it cure up for the night. So I figured at least I could get some color on it now and I could kind of plan my attack. Because the idea is I want to do a lot of layering and, and make it look like worn yellow pouches. I don't want to make it look very clean and I don't want a bright yellow. I want to have some fun with this one. So... I'm just going to get the color on tonight. After I do a lot of that sponge work, it's probably going to be very wet. And this stuff might take a little extra time to dry compared to like using airbrush paints. So it's kind of good to do it now. Let it sit overnight and I could come back and decide, do I need to do more sponge work? Am I going to do some misting of some yellow from an airbrush? And then detailing. So we'll see how things work out. There's no set process. I just have it in my head. It's just a matter of throwing color on there with some different techniques and seeing if I can get it the way I want it. All right, we're going to do sort of an experiment now. Uh, we're going to mix up some uh, golden yellow. Uh, we got some of this raw sienna here. And then I'm going to thin it down with a flat top coat from Garage Kit Colors. It's kind of an experiment. I want to see how this kind of works out. I don't really want to thin it down with water. Uh, I want to just try to dull coat to kind of make it like, you know, I want to have it like a dull paint as I'm painting and just see how things work out. Let's see where we go with it. Worst case scenario, I can always just... Uh, you know, paint over and do washing and stuff to go that route if I wanted to. All right, so uh, we're gonna add a little bit more color to this now. Um, after I put on my transparency colors, it's more of a mustard yellow right now, which is kind of in the direction I wanna go, but I still wanna bring out some more to it. So what I'm going to do is I have some uh, light rubber color from Vallejo 
gonna mix it with some uh, golden. Uh, I'm just gonna try to get a uh, very, very light brush effect on certain areas, you know, around certain areas that it could make it worn. And then uh, once that kind of cures up, we'll give it like a couple hours, either maybe today or tomorrow, depends on when I get to it. Uh, we'll do some leather tan transparency airbrush over it. I wanna make them look more leathery yellow than bright yellow with just a couple like, you know, shades on it. I want I don't want these pouches to really jump off a cable. We wanna focus more on him. We don't want him to be like the blue black outfit that we're going for and have these yellow pouches just jump out at you. We wanna make them worn down as best as we can. Alright, so uh, we got this little makeup uh, kit right here, so we're going to try to bring out a little bit more of the shadowing and stuff. So I think we're looking pretty good. I wanted to go more with this darker like yellow look, uh, make it worn a little bit. So I hit it with a blow dryer. It's a little bit tacky still, and I think that's going to help me with this uh, powder stuff to kind of get it in some areas. But yeah, this is kind of what I was going for, you can kind of see. Just kind of like a muted type yellow. That's kind of what we're going for. Don't want to... Never really want to go bright, bright yellow unless the item calls for it. And with him being cable and kind of like, you know, battle-worn and older and just having like, you know, gear for a long time. Alright, so uh, pretty much dulled it down now. I hit it with some uh, tester's dull coat and we're going to let these sit. So these might actually change throughout the project. Uh, these little uh, stripes right here, that actually might turn more like of a leather uh, depending on how the straps are around his body. I really have to talk to my friend about it. So this is going to be like an evolving project. So we're going to let these sit for now. Uh, he's probably going to stop by within like a week or two. And then uh, he can look at them and see if he wants to change up the colors if he likes it in person. So it's easier this way with somebody I know that can actually stop by and look at it, go from there. So I think we're pretty good for now. You know, I'll be uh, painting up the buttons, probably little silver buttons on them and stuff. But other than that, I mean, just letting that base uh, red oxide kind of come through, it looks pretty good. Um, and you can see the difference if it was like a bright yellow or kind of more of like a muted, uh, worn leather yellow. So I think that works out pretty cool. So we'll let these sit and uh, just keep plugging away. <laughs> 